series we're busy with at uh, Grace on Sundays, History Repeated, Lessons from the Early Church. We, we're simply asking, what can we learn from the early church in 2020? And I was drawn to the Corinthian church. It's uh, in its infancy, infancy and it's asking, how can we do life? You know, Surely if we, if we uh, fathom the very mysteries of God, then all will be well with the world. Surely uh, if we have faith, the kind of faith that moves mountains, that says mountain into the sea you go and, and the mountain moves, then surely all will be right with the world. If we're a generous people and we sell everything and we, uh, and we give it to the poor, surely everything will be right with the world. If we are filled with a kind of dedication that we would offer our bodies as martyrs uh, and die for the faith, then surely everything will be right with the world. These are the ways in which the Corinthian church is trying to work out how to do life. And Paul says to them, you know what? You can do all those things. You can do all those things, but if you don't have one thing, then nothing will be right. He says you can do all those things, but if you don't have love, nothing will be right. And I love these words. He says, so no matter what I say, so no matter what I believe and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. My father gave me an incredible leadership tip uh, many years ago. My father passed away uh, in 2006, so that's a long, long time ago. Um, he said, Wayne, um, if you love the people, they will follow you anywhere. And he's fundamentally was saying, if you have love, then as a leader, you can lead. If you have love, you can move things. If you have love, you can transform and change the world because love is the most powerful and enduring thing. My dad kind of lived that life of love out, you know, a, a sacrificial, self-giving love. I remember as a child, and we would joke about it often, but we were uh, driving along with dad, the three of us, uh, three of his kids in the car, and he said, can I just go and visit someone in hospital? So uh, that was the last thing we would wanted to do. But, but uh, he was moved to say, this is the time and this is the moment. Anyway, he locked us in the car. He said, I'll be back shortly. Um, and he went into the hospital to visit him. We turned the radio on and we listened and we listened and we listened and we listened. And when he returned, we had listened the battery flat. Um, <laughs> the car wouldn't start so that was the next disaster but the point is my dad had gone into the hospital to offer love and grace to someone who needed it most and he stayed for as long as he was needed he loved until the battery was flat so Paul says you can you can fathom all mysteries you can have clever words you can speak in the voices of angels but if you don't have love then in fact you are bankrupt if I don't have love, I am bankrupt. If you want to move the world, then love. It sounds easy, doesn't it? But let me read for you from that chapter in Corinthians. He says, we don't yet see things clearly. There is still so much mystery. We're squinting in a fog, peering through the mist. We don't know much, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright again. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. And then he says, for now, while we can't see clearly, <coughs> while, excuse me, while the sun doesn't shine as brightly as it might, there are three things for us to do. He says, for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do. To lead us towards that consummation. Trust steadily in God. Hope unswervingly. And love extravagantly. Three things. But he says the best of the three is love. I sense that our world requires from us to love extravagantly. To love from the deep center of ourselves. To love as we have been loved. I sense Jesus when he's praying in the garden of Gethsemane saying to God, surely there's another way. Let this cup pass from me. Um, 
but not my will, but yours be done. He's looking for another way. He's looking for another way. But then he follows the very will of God and he surrenders his life on a cross. The greatest act of love uh, is that one would give his life for another. So the question I leave with you, and I have a sense what we can learn from the early church. If we want to move the world, if we want to offer God's healing to the world, then it is with love that we'll do it. So who are you loving? Will you love your families? Will you love the one you have firmly placed outside of your embrace for now? Will you love extravagantly with all you have, your time, your talent and your treasure? Will you simply love? Because my sense is love undergirds all things. Will you love until the battery is flat? God bless you.